Okay, guys, um, here it is, um, September 1st, the season starts tomorrow, actually, but, um, we don't care about tomorrow. The Longhorns are playing Saturday against Rice. Obviously not going to be a big test, but, um, <clears throat> Definitely looking forward to seeing them play. Um, I've already said in past video show it's going to be bittersweet not seeing Colt McCoy, Jordan Shipley out there for Texas this year. Um, we, it seems like they've been there forever, but um, I'm still going to love it. Um, but this is a season that I am going to break down here in a video. This is my. These are my thoughts for Texas Longhorns this upcoming season. And here we go. Defensively, a lot of people think we have question marks back on the defensive end. Why? I'm not really sure. We've got the Shockey Brown and Curtis Brown. The you know the Brown brothers returning for their senior seasons at cornerback. Junior Aaron Williams, who believe me, this guy. Had a lot of talent coming in as a freshman. Played well. Last year had a great season as well. And this guy's got some major talent. He's got great speed. He's, he's not weak either. A lot of times you see really fast corners that are weak. You know, Robert Palmer, or as a singer, sorry, Ryan Palmer, cornerback who uh, Texas had a few years back. Um, he was a great corner, extremely fast, but he's a little weak. Uh, so you don't like seeing a weak um, cornerback, you like seeing the guy who's strong out there, you know, can maybe take down a running back. This guy's not weak. He's strong, and he's got a lot of quickness, and he's got good, good set of hands, too. This is a guy who we're going to see some, on some award lists before the, the end of the year. Um, then, of course, defensive line, we've got Sam Acho, uh, Eddie Jones, Alex Okafor, and Emmanuel Acho. There's a strong possibility that could be the, the, the front four. Um, With Keystone Randall there. Um, of course, the defensive tackle spot. So, Alex Oakford will probably be the fifth guy that they rotate in and out. You know, Will Muschamp, you know, any defense likes to have a guy that they can rotate in and out <clears throat> on the defensive line. So, that's always good. And Oakford is a very, is an excellent guy to do that with. Um, so, it really wouldn't shock me to see that. Offensively, yes, we have some question marks. Defensively, linebackers were set. Javante Johnson, I heard a lot of good things about him. Um, I'm not really sure where they came from. You know, we didn't really see this guy play like at all last year. You know, we t we saw him taking snaps, but I guess from training camp, there's got um, Will and some other. You know, the whole team has some great confidence in him. And of course, we got Dustin Ernest back there. He's a senior linebacker who got a lot of snaps last year splitting really splitting the snaps with uh, Jordan or Jared Norton. And then of course Keenan Robinson. Great linebacker junior coming in. He was in the same recruiting class, Earl Thomas. Blake Gideon. Blake Gideon leads me to another um guy to another part of this. Blake Gideon is just phenomenal. I think um he was kind of in the shadow of Earl Thomas, who left, sadly. He was a great cornerback, or a great safety. Texas has had a lot of great safeties. This guy had the potential to be the best in Texas history, hands down. I mean, we've had Michael Huff. We've had Marcus Griffin. We've had Michael Griffin, who's in the you know, great NFL player right now. Um, this guy had the potential to be better than all those guys. But he left... Now we've got Blake Gideon, you know, uh, he's just, he's phenomenal. Blake Gideon is really phenomenal. Um, but our defense, I really believe, is set. Plus, because we have Will Muschamp, I dare you to come up with a better defensive coordinator than Will Muschamp. In past seasons, everyone's going, oh, what are they going to do to place Brian Arakapo? What are they, you know, Frank Oakham left. That was the first, you know. Frank Oakham left. Oh man, Texas already struggled defensively last year. What they getting now? And they had to replace Frank Oakham, great defensive tackle. Roy Miller came in. Brian Rackwell. Oh, then they left. Oh man, 
What are we going to do to replace Roy Miller and Brian Rackwell? Not only that, but they lost Henry Melton and Aaron Lewis as well that year. They win. It's like the whole defensive line. What are we going to do? Sergio Kendall and Lamar Houston. That's what they were going to do. This year, I think it's just going to be Eddie Jones and Keystone Randall. Um, and I don't know about Eddie Jones personally. Um, I have a lot of self-confidence in him, but, but overall, I don't know how good he's going to be. But on the other side of that line, got Sam Acho. Phenomenal guy. And his brother, Emmanuel Acho. That's going to make them that much better. That they're brothers and they know what's going on. Twin brothers. It's going to make it that much easier. Um, offensively, we do have some question marks, especially the offensive line. It was an offensive line that, you know, I'm a Texas fan, but I'm going to be straight with you. It was not a great offensive line last year. Now, now this year we're going to, man, I, I don't know. We're, we're, you know, replacing Charlie Tanner, Chris Hall, Adam Yoldowski. We're only returning Michael Huey and um, Kyle Hicks off this line. David Snow, yeah, got a lot of playing time last year, but he played for the injured Chris Hall against uh, Oklahoma. Well, McCoy got sacked what was that, like six times, six or seven times. There were kind of knockdowns. McCoy got knocked down 15 plus times in that game because of all the pressure. So it didn't really bode well that his only game that started was one of the worst games the offensive line had all year. Um, <coughs> but they're they're changing up the game. You know, the Chowder Johnson's going to be the starter. Cody Johnson, huge. My brother's an Ohio State fan. This guy is like, as far as weight goes, he's not fat. But he's twice the weight of Chris Beanie Wells, the guy that Texas struggled to stop him a lot in 2008 Fiesta Bowl. Um, 2009, technically, but whatever. 2008, 2009 Fiesta Bowl. So, this guy reminds me a lot of him. Then we're also going to have Trey Newton. We're going to have um, Fozzie Whitaker. And Von Jerome McGee Sr. These are all four of these guys are guys that they, they can all, they're all very talented. Speedback is mainly, well, it's pretty much only uh, Fozzie Whitaker. And he did really well against um, Oklahoma last year. He's one of the only high points of the offense last year against Oklahoma. Then, of course, Trey Newton other guys. So that's making the fact that we have a freshman quarterback who showed he's very talented in the BCS championship game last year. That's making that less and less of a question mark. Receivers, Malcolm Williams played horrible last year. I mean, he had some games where you're just kind of like, wow, he's really coming. But he played horrible last year, especially compared to what Texas fans were, were expecting after very solid freshman season. This year, I expect him to be a lot better. He's got definitely got the size for it. Um, and even it, he doesn't have to be the number one option because we got John Childs, who's got good size too. He was a good addition last year. We used to play quarterback. Um, then, of course, James Kirkendall and uh, Marquise Goodwin. I'm expecting a lot out of him as well. But still only a sophomore, so don't expect too much because he doesn't have a ton of experience. But James Kirkendall, senior. Malcolm Williams, junior. John Childs, a senior. Um, I'm expecting good things from this Texas team. And the fact we do not have a top-notch receiving core, but that's okay because we're going to be primarily running team. The offensive line will have to step up, but I don't think our, I don't picture our offensive line being much worse than it was last year because we got another year of experience with Kyle Hicks and Michael Hewing. We have a bunch of guys that are new subbing in, but they're, they're not freshmen. They're, they're juniors and seniors stepping into role, so they know what's going on around them. Um, so that's going to be a big thing. Plus, Garrett Gilbert got more experience playing last year in the championship game than he could have if he had, if Texas had blown out everybody they played last year and he had played the entire fourth quarter of every game last season. And we saw he got moxie, he's got poise, he's got it all. This guy did not give up when no one would have blamed him if he did. This guy came to Texas for a reason. He wants to win. And he embraces the pressure of becoming the new face of the Texas program, and we can see that. Hook'em horns. It's going to be a good year.